Hey, I'm Dr. Munshi. In this video, I'll talk about recurrent aphthous stomatitis or recurrent aphthous also. What is it? Its clinical types and also uh, how to diagnose it, its clinical features and differential diagnosis, investigations, and finally, step by step approach to the management. So, let's start. Recurrent aphthous stomatitis is considered as the most common oral mucosal lesion. This present as recurrent multiple small or ovoid ulcers having yellow floors and are surrounded by erythematous halos present first in childhood or adolescence. We will see pictures later on. Now it is more common in female aphthous ulcer increase by increasing age. The cause of aphthous ulcer is unknown and therefore many factors are still implicated in the disease including hormonal changes, trauma, drugs, food hypersensitivity, nutritional deficiency, stress and tobacco. In drugs, some NSAIDs aggravates the condition, fentobarbitone and there are other drugs also, trauma, toothbrush trauma, it aggravates the condition, nutritional deficiency, iron deficiency or foliate deficiency, stress also aggravates the condition and tobacco also aggravates the conditions. Now there are three clinical presentations of uh, recurrent aphthous ulceration. One is minor aphthous ulcer, major aphthous ulcer and herpetiform ulcerations. You can see the first picture. This is small ulcer is there. This is minor aphthous ulcer. This is major aphthous ulcer. The size is greater than 10 millimeter. The size is less than 10 millimeter in case of minor aphthous ulcer. And you will see uh, this thing, this ulceration. You can uh, think about that this is uh, the size is greater than 10 millimeter, it, but it is not major ulceration because uh, you can see the shape of it. It is irregular shaped. That means it formed by the collision of uh, two or three or four uh, minor uh, minute ulcers. Actually, it is collisions uh, of multiple ulcers. Now we'll see the uh, characters of minor, major and herpetiform ulcers. The peak age of onset for minor aphthous ulcer is second, major first and second, herpetiform is third. The number of ulcers in case of minor, 1 to 5 ulcer you will see in major, 1 to 3 and in herpetiform, many ulcer, 5 to 20 ulcers and sometimes it collages to form a big ulcers. The size of the ulcer is less than 10 millimeter in case of minor, in major, greater than 10 and in herpetiform it is 1 to 2 millimeter. So it is very minute. Now duration of uh, healing for minor it is 7 to 14 days for major it is 2 weeks to 3 months hypertiform it is 7 to 14 days. So healing with scarring minor there will be no scar major there will be scar and in hypertiform there will be no scar. The site is also specific in case of minor the ulcer you will see only in the non keratinized mucosa especially labial or buccal mucosa dorsum and lateral borders of the tongue. In case of major aphthous ulcer, you will see the ulcer in keratinized as well as non-keratinized. So, you will see the ulcer in gingiva also and particularly soft palate in case of non-keratinized mucosa. And herpetiform, it is uh, similar to minor that is non-keratinized mucosa but particularly floor of the mouth and ventral surface of the tongue. So, these things you have to remember. Next, immunological features of uh, recurrent aphthous ulcer. Numerous association of human leukocyte antigen HLA and RAS antigen have been reported in the medical literature. RAS pathophysiology seems to be associated with a disorder in immunomodulation. Lymphocytes seem to be a predominant cells in aphthoid lesions and there was a, a variation in the CD4 plus uh, by CD8 plus ratio during its different stages prodrom or pre-ulceration, ulceration and healing. So, this is a uh, immunological lesion actually. Now, the systemic disorders that are associated with RAS, the systemic disorders that are associated with lesions clinically similar to RAS are nutritional deficiencies leading to anemias, Bechet syndrome, cyclic neutropenia, HIV infection, PFAPA, reactive arthritis, sweet syndrome, magic syndrome. So, all these things are differential diagnosis of aphthocelsor. Next, how to diagnose? You have to take history, you have to see the lesion, you have to examine the lesion, you have to examine all the systems also, like gastrointestinal systems, etc. Uh, basically, history, 
features of ulcer and examination of gastrointestinal diseases now particularly family history frequency of ulceration duration of ulceration number of ulcers site of ulcer is it in the non keratinized or keratinized mainly when we discuss about aphthous ulcer it is the minor aphthous ulcer that is most common minor aphthous ulcer and the site for minor aphthous ulcer is non keratinized so if you see any ulcer in the keratinized then you have to think about other ulcerations also herpes ulcerations etc major aphthous ulcer is very rare actually so this is also important for diagnosing aphthous ulcer next size and shape of the ulcer associated medical conditions genital ulcerations skin problems gastrointestinal disturbances because many uh, gastrointestinal disturbances it its uh, presentations you can find in the tongue or mucosal uh, lesion also now the drug history you have to take the history of drug that patient is taking for other diseases like uh, any insects or other drugs age of the ulcer base of the ulcer and surrounding tissues next investigations these are the these investigations we uh, not recommend routinely if there is persistent of recurrent aphthous ulcerations in spite of treatment and uh, stress reduction protocol etc if it is persistent and conventional treatments are not uh, you can't manage with the con conventional treatment then you have to do some investigations like hemoglobin and full blood count to see the nutritional deficiencies esr CR crp for finding any chronic uh, disease or acute disease serum b12 serum red cell folate and lastly anti gliadin and anti endomycel auto antibodies the last these antibodies these if if it is positive that means it is gastrointestinal disturbances or celiac disease next differential diagnosis as i discussed earlier uh, hiv lesions herpes virus lesions uh, lupus erythematosus pemphigus vulgaris different lesions you can um, you can uh, think about uh, when you discuss about differential diagnosis there is a huge list actually but one thing just take home that uh, if you see major aphthous ulceration then uh, this may be uh, associated with hiv so in case of major aphthous ulceration recurrent major aphthous ulceration is very rare if you see this so uh, must uh, investigate for any systemic disease especially hiv next management this these slides three or four slides is very important uh, just uh, listen very carefully the management protocol is to reduce the symptom reduce the healing time and also prevention some patients have rash episodes lasting for only few days occurring only a few times a year those need palliative therapy for, for pain and maintain good oral hygiene so if a patient suffers for uh, suffers from rash one time in a year and also very less painful or not much concern then do not go for various treatment modality just uh, he or she need palliative therapy palliative therapy and systematic sorry symptomatic therapy like lignocaine gel and uh, chlorhexidine mouthwash in case of uh, uh, little bit infection is there and you have to advise the patient to maintain good oral hygiene drug therapy be it uh, topical or systemic is considered for patients who experience multiple episodes of rash each mouth and or present with symptoms of severe pain and difficulty in eating so you have to consider drug therapy in these patients a treatment of oral apnea can be divided into five category antibiotic anti inflammatory immunomodulatory symptomatic and alternative now step by step approach first we'll start with the topical and we'll try to limit the treatment modality inside topical treatments first for a patient who is suffering from this ulceration for the first time or the disease is that uh, the disease is not that much uh, Don't uh, the severe, then you have to consider only lignocaine gel. Lignocaine gel applied to ulcer as needed, and you can add chlorhexidine gluconate, 0.12 or 0.2 percent. Range with 10 ml twice daily. So these two is the first line of treatment. First, then 
if the healing period is more or patient is telling about pain little bit moderate mild to moderate pain then routinely with these medicine lignocaine and clorhexidine and gluconate a modern medicine amlexanox 5% paste uh, brand name is lexanox you will add you will add in mild cases also and moderate moderate cases also so this is actually these uh, reduce the healing time healing time is usually 5 to 7 days or 10 days but if you use amlexanox you will see the healing time will be less and also it will uh, it will leads to less pain actually so apply to dried ulcer 2 to 4 times daily until heals next tetracycline capsule 250 mg if lignocaine and amlexanox is not effective and patient is again and again uh, recurrent aqueous ulceration is there next thing you will consider tetracycline capsule 250 mg one capsule dissolved in 180 ml of water rinse with this suspension four times a day for four, four to five days this is also effective in treating aqueous ulcer you can also uh, use minocycline drug or uh, doxycycline just like this so alternative drug for uh, tetracycline is doxy and minocycline so this next transuron that is steroid topical steroid 0.1 percent in oda base so if patient is suffering from moderate to severe pain and also you will see some inflammatory features redness you will you have to consider topical steroid and triamcinolone acetate it is the you can consider first this steroid this is less potent but first consider this medicine if it is uh, not working then go to the clobetazole propionate or beta methazone next so all these things these are topical treatment these are the things that you have to limit inside this try to limit inside this but if these things cannot manage the condition or the condition is severe recurrent aphthous ulcer that means in within weeks or months many ulcers and ulcers and episodes are there and it is a severe conditions and it reducing the patient's quality of life then you have to consider about systemic drugs prednisolone colchicin this effectivity is similar more, uh, more novel drug or most newer drug is rebamipide. Clinical and experimental data shows that rebamipide accelerates ulcer healing, improves scar quality, and prevents ulcer recurrence. So, you can consider prednisone colchicin and rebamipide also. Not uh, use multimodality, use one or one medicine at a time. Then, for severe condition, thalidomide pentoxifiline, eternacept, this medicine you can prescribe but of course with consultation of a general practitioner because these medicine have different side effects also. So before do, giving this you have to have thorough knowledge about these medicines. So I will suggest try to limit the medication, try to limit the treatment in topical but you can prescribe pednisolone, colchicine or rebamipide and this thing you can reserve for uh, reluctant type of lesion or refractory type of lesion and with consulting and consultation with oral medicine specialist or medicine specialist so these were the detailed uh, discussion about aphthous ulceration i think it will help you a lot thank you very much for patience listening